Juju Legends 8 is about a week away, and so I thought what better way to stir up some hype and have some fun than do three theory crafts for Brave Felix. That's right, we're gonna have three different versions of Brave Felix with a unique preference weapon, a unique preference skill, and a new inheritable skill as well. My goal is to make these units meta impactful, but not meta warping, so that way they don't like disappear the first time we see the next wave of power creep. With all three of these theory crafts, you will see some similar effects amongst all of them, as I want to create some key effects for Felix as a unit, so that whenever we get a new Felix, he would have some of these effects. One of the major effects you will see is something he had on his only base version, which is the ability to always have his special charged. With that said, let's jump into our first theory craft, which is the most likely option we will see, but it's also a bit of the most boring. So here we have Swordmaster Felix. We have him with his stat line of 198 BST. That is right, we're at 198 BST. And technically, if you go with two super boons with a florette, he could even hit 200, which is kind of crazy. We then have his preference weapon, Sword of Moralta. This has slaying and has all stats plus five during combat. You also get a bonus to all stats equal to 15% of his speed at start of combat. You get true damage equal to 20% of the speed, flat damage reduction equal to 20% of his speed. You get no counter disrupt. You get a special cooldown minus two at start of the turn, which is similar to like shield pulse or things like that, right? It allow you to just pre-charge your special so that way you can have it ready. He also gets minus two special jump before the foe's first attack, similar to Lagoo's friend. And then lastly, after combat, he will neutralize any penalty on himself and he will heal for the total damage reduced during combat by any source plus 10. Okay, so we have a preference weapon here who is very much designed to Omni Tank. The thing is currently being an Omni Tank is quite difficult if you're not named MM Ike. And so there are some key effects you have to have in order to Omni Tank well. One of those key effects is flat damage reduction. So I wanna make sure that uh, Felix had that in his weapon. Another one is no counter to disrupt. And then the other major one is a way to cycle your special effectively, right? You always wanna be able to have your special up when you need it. And that is kind of one of the signature effects we saw on base Felix. So I want to make sure that Brave Felix had that as well. We then move on to his preference special, Aegis Shield. This is a three cooldown special, and it has at start of combat, if special is ready, you get 40% AOE damage reduction. And then also if unit special is ready or unit special has been triggered during combat, you get 20% true damage based off the speed, you get damage reduction piercing, and you get 40% damage reduction when special triggers. So essentially Aegis Shield acts as an improved godlike reflexes for Felix. Felix was one of the first characters to have godlike reflexes, and so I think it's kind of cool to keep that sentiment going, but just getting an improved version. And so I think getting the AoE damage reduction is really key for Omni Tanks in the current meta. You also get that true damage, but it's a little bit better than godlike reflexes. But most importantly, you get damage reduction piercing. So this is like one of the key effects we've seen with Lagoo's Friend 4 that really has made Lagoo's Friend 4 like centralized on every Omni Tank build. And so being able to have that in your actual PRF special means that he doesn't have to run Lagoo's Friend 4 and he can actually run dif different options, giving him a lot more versatility in his build. So I think this is gonna be a really cool special Quite strong overall, but not broken. Okay, let's move on to a new and inheritable tier 4 B skill, Intense Velocity. This is essentially supposed to be a new version of your speed-based damage reduction skills, but I wanted to make it powerful enough where it could compete with Lagoo's Friend 4 for speedy Omni Tanks. Okay, so we have Intense Velocity. This inflicts attack and speed minus 4 on the foe. You get Phantom Speed plus 7, just like your other tier 4 speed-based damage reduction skills. You get 50% speed-based damage reduction with that speed check. It works against all attacks and AoEs, and it is Brave Damage Reduction, which is pretty standard nowadays. You also get a speed version of Null Follow-Up. You get Anti-Guard. And lastly, you get the Frozen Effect, where you get to increase the speed difference necessary for foe to make a follow-up attack. But instead of being by 20, which is the full Frozen Effect, this one's only be by 10. So Intensive Velocity is essentially going to be an, a great option for those speedy Omni Tanks who don't want to run Lagoo's Friend 4. Right? They want to run a different build that really focuses on their speed and encourages more speed stacking. And then when it comes to the other skills that Brave Felix will have on his base kit, which can act as great fodder, we have Distant Bonus Doubler and Attack Speed Pledge. So overall, Swordmaster Brave Felix would be a very powerful Omni Tank that has the key effects he needs, who can easily cycle his special all the time, making sure that he always has that improved godlike reflexes and Aegis Shield up, meaning that he can reduce a lot of damage he's taking while also doing a lot of damage back. This Omni Tank version of Brave Felix could definitely compete with Emblem Ike. And that was kind of the goal to make him not as strong as Emblem Ike, but to put him in the same category so he can be one of the best Omni Tanks in the game. Now let's move on to a different version of Brave Felix where he follows in the footsteps of his father. 
Okay, so we have Holy Knight Brave Felix with a colorless tome cavalry. He has a BST of 177, and he has high attack and speed, but he has pretty low uh, defense and resistance. We have Frau Darius' Legacy, which grants slaying. It gives all stats plus five. He gets an additional attack and speed plus X, which is equal to 20% of his speed at start of combat. He gets 20% true damage based off his speed. This also works with AoEs, and he continues to have that special jump effect that he's gonna have in all of his forms. He gets minus two special cooldown before his first attack and minus two special cooldown before his follow-up attack, allowing him to just hit those big specials consistently. And then also he gets some nice support effects as most nukes nowadays need to also offer some support. So at start of turn, if he meets the 25% HP condition, he'll grant dominance to himself and any ally within three spaces. And he also gives cancel one to himself and any ally within three spaces as well. So this is just a nice nuking weapon that gives him a lot of firepower while also offering some nice support to allow other units to nuke as well. Okay, then we have his preference B skill Protector of Fargus. At start of turn, if he meets the HP condition of 25%, he's gonna inflict a visible minus six attack, speed, defense, and resistance on the nearest foe and any foes within two spaces of them. He's also gonna inflict sabotage in the same radius and panic. So he's gonna be able to just do massive debuffs on the enemy team while also crippling them with sabotage. And if they try to use any visible bonuses, Panic can turn that off as well. Then he gets, if he initiates combat or if he's solo, he'll inflict speed and resistance minus six on the foe. He'll dole speed and resistance on the foe. So just removing those visible bonuses and he gets a desperation effect. This preference Bisco offers a ton of support for the entire team while offering some key effects that Felix needs to be able to nuke efficiently. So just a very nice, powerful Bisco there. We then move on to a new Inheritable Mage special, Soul Blade. This is a three cooldown special, and it boosts damage by 40% of unit speed when special triggers. It also ignores damage reduction, so giving that damage reduction piercing effect. This is the mage special we have been waiting for. We kind of expected it with Flare, it never happened. So this will be the option for mages to get through that DR on their special. And it works extremely well with Felix's kit, as he can essentially Soul Blade once, and then on the Fall attack, also Soul Blade again, just allowing him to put out a ton of damage. Now, when it comes to his other skills that he would bring for fodder, he also has Flared Sparrow and Odd Speed Wave 4, giving another option for that other than Summer Gold Egg, which also gives him no follow up, which he desperately needs. So, in this version of Brave Felix, he follows in the footsteps of Rodrigue becomes the leader of the Faldarius family, and he offers that support right and gets the amazing nuke in as well. So I think this is a cool option. I'd love to see this if this was possible, as it would be just something so unique and different than base Felix. But let's move on to the final version of Brave Felix, and the one I want to see the most, Mortal Savant Brave Felix. Okay, so we have a colorless infantry mage, once again with a similar stat line than he already has, with extremely low resistance but solid defense. He gets a BSC total of 187. That's kind of crazy that we've gotten this far, but that's where mages are going to be at after Two True Legends. So we have Zoltan's arsenal. This is kind of a callback to Sword of Zoltan, which you can get as like almost like a preference weapon for Felix uh, pre time skip. This is going to grant Kanto remaining plus one. It's going to give slaying. He's going to get all stats plus five, and he's going to get all stats plus X equal 15% of his speed at start of combat. He's also going to get 20% speed true damage with AoEs as well. He's going to get that 20% speed based flat damage reduction. He gets close counter and adaptive damage. And so this is a very interesting weapon that tries to make Felix into an infantry mage tank, but also gives him a lot of firepower so he can also kill his foes. The Kanto remaining one offers some great mobility and the adaptive damage kind of plays into the Mortal Savant where he's using his sword and magic. We then move on to his preference C skill, Greater Crest. This gives like a quick impulse 2 effect where you get special cooldown count minus 2 at start of every turn. You get special jump 2 before your foe's first attack, and you get special jump 2 before unit's follow up attack. And then after unit defeats foe, he grants one stack of a new bonus called Crest Power to himself. Crest Power grants all stats plus 2, 4 flat damage reduction, and 4 true damage per stack. This bonus can stack up to 5 times. It cannot be removed, cleansed, or copied. And so this is a really unique skill that we really haven't seen on any anyone else. Now, the reason why I want to call it Greater Crest is because Felix is the only character in Three Houses to have a Greater Crest naturally, right? There's two other characters I won't spoil who have Greater Crest, but they didn't get them in natural means. And so I wanted to make it so that he had that really unique niche of having a special always ready all the time. But I wanted to take it to a new level for this version, where not only can he have a special ready, but he has a lot of options for different types of specials. So he can easily charge up big specials like AoEs or even like Miracle, and he's going to have it pretty consistently, which is cool. 
Then also though, we have this really unique thing we've never seen in Fire Emblem Heroes, where he gets stronger as the battle goes on. As he defeats each foe, he gets a little bit stronger, and this can stack a whole bunch of times, making him really ridiculous at the end of combat. Now this might seem completely and early overpowered, but you have to think of it from like a standpoint where realistically you're not going to ever have five stacks on Felix. The only way you're really going to have that is like an Aether Raid's offense, and that's like at the end of the battle where most of the major threats are already removed. Typically the first person who engages on you is the one who's going to do the most damage and be the most threatening, where he's going to have the least or no amount of crest power at all. And so I think this is completely fine. Typically he'll probably have one to two stacks, and it does offer some nice stats as well as some nice power and damage reduction. But thematically, I think this fits Felix extremely well, where he's going to just get stronger throughout the battle as he just continues to mow down his enemies. And if we ever get a game mode where it's like a siege game mode that's actually good, then this will be really cool there as well. Now let's move on to the new tier 4 B skill that is inheritable, Adaptive Defenses. This is a B skill I'm trying to design for mages so they can be a little bit more tanky while still having that damage that they definitely need. So this inflicts attack and speed minus 4 on the foe. It calculates damage taken using the higher of units defense or resistance. So not only does he have adaptive damage, but he also has adaptive defense, allowing him to take advantage of that really high defense that he has while kind of ignoring his low resistance, which is really cool in my opinion. He also gets 40% damage reduction that is brave, he gets full no follow up, and he gets damage reduction piercing when special triggers. So you get a nice mix of defensive effects and offensive effects, which I think really suits these mages who really need to be able to do both roles of tanking and nuking. And I think this will fit really well onto those mages who don't want to use Lagoo's friend 4. When it comes to the other skills he has for fodder, he has flare and attack speed finish as well, so some nice fodder there. Mortal Savant Felix is the one I want the most personally. I'd love to have a mage tank who also is very deadly as a nuke and just be able to switch both roles pretty versatility based on what build you're using. I think that would be a great Felix who could stand the test of time. With that said, that's going to be all three theory crafts I have for Brave Felix and I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of these three theory crafts? Do you think they're too powerful? They're not powerful enough? What do you think of these new skills? Do you think they'd be useful and who would you love to see them on? Make sure to drop a comment down below letting me know all your dreams for Brave Felix and the other Brave units as well. As always, I'd like to thank all my members for their constant support, and if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. This has been Oblivion, I'll catch y'all later with more Fire Emblem Heroes.